All right, welcome back. So the other day when we took notes on the types of energy, you learned that there are six major ways that energy shows itself in everyday life. Um, and so just to recap, we talked about light, heat, chemical, electrical, mechanical, and nuclear. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how those types of energy can transform from one type to another because they don't always just stay the same. So you may remember from last semester when we were talking about balancing equations, the whole reason we did that was because there's this thing called the law of conservation of matter and that said that we can't create or destroy matter but only convert from one type of matter to the other um, and so that just meant like phases of matter or um, different ways that matter shows itself. So in those chemical reactions we saw like photosynthesis or rusting, things like that. So this law having to do with energy has the same type of idea. Energy is also not created or destroyed. So it doesn't just pop up out of thin air. It also doesn't just disappear. It just converts from one form to another. So we need to think about that as we start to apply this idea to the different types of energy we've been talking about. So some examples here. Um, I wish I could do this in class for you, but I'm not that talented. I can't juggle. But I do know a few people that can, and maybe some of you can too. So if you do juggle, you might want to demonstrate that in class for us because we have plenty of equipment that you can use. But as we have um, jugglers juggling balls, the energy is being converted from potential to kinetic back and forth over and over again as the ball goes up in the air, it's moving to a certain point when it converts all the way to potential. We've talked about how the highest point would be potential because it's then going to fall and turn in kinetic energy. When suddenly you catch it, you stop the motion, and it's potential again, and then you release the ball into the air and it becomes kinetic. So you can see how that continuously changes over and over. So these pictures here on the slide are some examples of how potential and kinetic energy are changed back and forth. Um, if you've ever watched the Olympics or if maybe you have a sibling that's in track at the high school, the, there's one thing called the pole vault. And as the runner runs with this pole, they were building up all this kinetic energy. And suddenly when they put stick the pole into the ground and shoot themselves up in the air over this bar, they've got this kinetic energy changing to potential as they go up into the air because then they change direction and fall back down. The waterfall here is another good example of potential energy. Um, because the water is moving, but in relation to um, the water at the bottom of the fall, it does have potential because it's going to suddenly have a free fall until it reaches the bottom and impacts. This third picture is something called a pendulum. Um, if you've ever been to a science museum, I think Richmond has a huge pendulum that knocks things down as it kind of swings back and forth. Or, you know, a swing set is the same concept. This converts potential and kinetic back and forth. So we just need to think with these examples, where would we have the greatest amount of potential energy and when we'd have the greatest kinetic energy. So remember, potential energy deals with weight and height. Kinetic energy is dealing with mass and velocity. So I think the things that we really would want to pinpoint here is the height and the velocity. So in, for instance, with the swing, our potential energy is greatest at the top of the swing, right? And then your kinetic energy, like the worst point to walk in front of someone when they're on a swing would be like right as they're at the bottom of that swing because that's when they're moving the fastest and they build up the most speed. Okay, and we've talked about this in terms of roller coaster too. So it's, let's apply some of these types of energy that we took notes on the other day and think about how they can be transformed in everyday life. This first picture shows an ice cream cone, it looks pretty yummy, um, and it converts into motion or mechanical energy. So chemicals in the food that we eat give us mechanical energy, it gives us the energy to do all the activities that we do throughout the day. Um, remember the other day when we said the word radiant it meant light energy, or another word was electromagnetic. So sunlight provides light for trees and other plants to make their own food. Well, photosynthesis deals with chemicals, so that's why we have the transformation of light to chemical. Okay, now 
these two are the same types of energy, right? And I told classes the other day that eating food for your bodies is kind of the same thing as giving fuel for your car. Your car needs gasoline to run. So chemical gasoline provides energy for the motion of the car. It gets converted. Finally, another example would be this electrical plug then gives you thermal energy. If you can't really tell, this picture is an oven and a stove on top. So it's not going to be able to be turned on and create heat unless it's plugged into the wall. So that's why we start with electrical. We end up with thermal once we turn that stove on. So let's figure out these transformations here. Now this first one's kind of obvious because this is what we literally just talked about. So we start with electrical because it has a plug and we end up with heat. Another way to say that is thermal. Okay. Now this light bulb, are you going to be able to turn it on by just holding it in your hand? Hopefully you answered no to that. What you need to have the beginning of this is electricity. You need to have something to plug this light bulb into. So the beginning of our transformation in order to end up with light, we all start with electrical and we'll end up with light. And you could also use those two other words, radiant or electromagnetic. All right, so now we have a flashlight. Now hopefully you know that a flashlight is normally not gonna run all by itself, but it needs something in order to run. Some of you might have flashlights on your cell phones, and this kind of goes into the same idea. You need a battery, and batteries are chemical energy. So in order to have this light turn on, you have to start with chemical energy and you end up with light. Okay, now some of you hopefully have some chores and you may be in charge of mowing the lawn when it's springtime and summertime. And something you might know is that lawnmowers typically need gasoline. And you know, in this case, we'll just pretend like number four does need gasoline. So we said gasoline is a chemical energy. And Hopefully you know that when you turn on the lawnmower, there's a blade on this inside cover that spins around. So that deals with motion. Another word to use for motion is mechanical. All right? Now, let's imagine that this hammer is being held up, and then it's going to swing down. And if you need to draw this arrow on your notes, too, that might be a good idea. So if it's being held up in the air, we're starting out with potential. And as it swings down to the ground, tell me what it is. This is like Blue's Clues, hopefully you said it, it is kinetic. I would really love to see you guys talking to your computer or your cell phone right now. Finally, we have the sunshine. And um, we know that the beginning of all of this, with all the reactions taking place, it involves nuclear energy. And we end up with light. In the summertime, you might even argue that we end up with heat. So I'd take both of those answers if I were you. So in class, after we're done um, talking about this and reviewing this information, we'll do some practice with lots of different pictures and scenarios. And hopefully my plan is also to play some Pictionary. So we'll have plenty of time to get used to this idea of transformation. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you later.